Right, so hello and welcome back to another 90 Day Fiancé video on Arthur TV. Today we're looking at part 8 of 43 year old Danielle and her 28 year old Tunisian husband Muhammad. So last time out we looked at Muhammad's start to life in Miami. Despite enjoying their first few days together, Muhammad and Louisa began bickering over Louisa's reluctance to help him find a job, despite promising him that she could help him get one once they arrived. As tensions grew deeper, their relationship spiralled, until Louisa turned around and told Muhammad that she was leaving to go to the west coast. Already struggling with having no money, no job and no friends in Miami, things went from bad to worse for Muhammad, as Danielle told him that she was filing for an annulment. If he wanted to avoid getting deported, she said he'd have to come to Ohio and convince her to file for a divorce instead. Today, Danielle and Muhammad are finally going to meet up again to figure out what exactly is next for their relationship. But whilst Muhammad just wants to get a divorce so that he can stay in the US, despite having already filed for an annulment, it isn't entirely clear what exactly Danielle wants. I'm hoping that when I meet with Muhammad that I will be able to stay strong and be able to stick with the annulment and get him deported. I hope you get the answers you're looking for. And I hope that you can put some closure to this. Because yeah. you need it. For you. You know, whenever I date a girl, I don't worry that she's got an intimidating father or a nutcase brother. I worry that she's got a friend like Beth. You make one small mistake and you just know that that friend is going to be in their ear telling them to break up with you every opportunity they get. And although Muhammad's definitely made more than just one small mistake, you can really see the impact it has on Danielle. Whenever she's been around Beth, she gets all choked up and is like, I want to go through with the annulment and get him deported. But when she's on her own and talking about him, it's so obvious that she wants to get back together with him. Me filing the annulment and scaring him into coming back to me, it worked. Okay. In my fantasy, I'm hoping that when we meet and talk, we can possibly get back together and work on our marriage. See, she's so not over him yet, is she? Even though she dated that Gabe guy in the last video, she so clearly is not ready to move on yet. I mean, she's even still got photos of her and Muhammad up all around their house, even though they broke up months ago. It's like she's not ready to accept the fact that he really isn't coming back this time. Obviously wanting to avoid the nut house, Muhammad doesn't want Danielle to know where he's staying. Thankfully though, he does still have one friend in all of this, Walmart Tom, and he's letting Muhammad stay over until he sorted everything out with Danielle. I love the States, but I'm not gonna just work on the marriage just to, to stay here. If you think that I'm using her for the green card, just write come and live with her for like two or three days and you will understand what I'm talking about. I think that kind of rules out any possibility of them getting back together, even if Danielle does threaten him with deportation. With her saying that she scared him back to her and wanting to get back together with him, it could come as quite a surprise to her when he turns around and says that he definitely does just want a divorce. Also, to be fair to him, saying that he'd rather go back home than stick around and put up with Danielle just to secure the green card does help his case that this relationship was genuine when he first arrived. But then again, maybe he was willing to fake a normal relationship to get a green card, but just wasn't quite expecting it to be this bad. But before we hear from Muhammad about just how bad things got, a quick message from today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience to your phone. And with millions of champion combinations, countless tactics, and hundreds of artifacts to equip, you can build your team and raid your way through dungeon runs, campaign battles, boss fights, and PvP arena matches. I have been playing this game relentlessly for a while now, and here are just three of my favourite champions. First up is Belenor, a high elf who can put out both decreased defence and weaken, and he has one key job, hitting as hard as he can. Next up is Sisha Flametongue, a legendary demon spawn that can whack a whole enemy team with HP burn debuffs. And last but not least is the legendary skinwalker called Brachus the Shifter. This beast hits and doesn't stop hitting, with one of his skills allowing him to attack a single enemy six separate times. Raid has got a ton happening this month, with a fresh rotation of the brutal Hydra boss and a load of events and tournaments every single day, including some special 
special Valentine's Day event where you can get your hands on a brand new legendary champion. So click on the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen right now and you'll also get this epic champion, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost and 1 ancient shard all for free. So you can summon some elite champions right from the start. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. So what are you waiting for? Big thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Remember the link will be in the description. Now let's get back to Walmart Tom's house where Muhammad is talking about what it was like living with Danielle. She gets mad and jealous and she started acting crazy. She tried to lock me in the bedroom. She scares me sometimes. I felt like I was in a prison and I have to find somehow to escape. So now I'm trying to go and apply for a divorce. Yeah, the more we hear about how Danielle treated Muhammad, the less surprising it is that he couldn't take one more day of it. It's also not just his upcoming green card application that makes him want to get this divorce so badly. His name is still on the lease and the electricity bill, and they still have a shared bank account. So whilst they remain married, his credit score is tanking. Therefore, he's not wasting another moment. He's told Danielle that he's back in Ohio and told her to come and meet him so that they can meet face to face and hopefully finally put this nightmare to an end. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Okay. He looks so awkward. He does not want to be there at all, does he? She looks pretty awkward too, but for a completely different reason. She looks like a school kid going on their first ever date with their crush. It's nice that they had a civilized introduction to begin with, but that's not what we're here for, guys. We're here for the drama. It's been four months since you last saw him, Danielle. You're not here to flirt. You're here because you want answers, and we want war. Just say whatever you want to say. I'm listening. What do you want? Why, why'd you leave the way you did? Okay. You got up to go to work, packed your stuff. Adios. You just walked out the door. Ask yourself why. Why did I leave that way? How did you act every single time I tried to leave? Yeah, to be fair, from the way it sounds, this was probably one of the only times he actually had a clear path to his escape. Muhammad said after the episode that whenever they would argue and he would try to leave, she would sit in front of the front door and refuse to move. And this wasn't a rare occurrence either. This was happening several times a week. Understandably, Danielle's kids couldn't even stand it any longer. They actually told Danielle before she left that if she got back together with Muhammad, that they'd leave home. And although I think there's more chance of Muhammad ending up with Walmart Tom, I do not blame them. Danielle don't get why I left Ohio because she is used to have a miserable life. For her, that's normal. I cannot have that kind of life with Daniel. No, I cannot. Saying Danielle is used to having a miserable life is savage, but who's gonna say he's wrong? And also, who can blame him for leaving? He stuck it out for over a year, and if he was suffering as bad as he says he was and nothing looked like it was gonna change, why wouldn't he leave? Especially given he had a younger, better looking and seemingly more supportive partner in Louisa offering him a better life in Miami. I mean, I know it didn't work out in the end, but it wasn't exactly a difficult choice, was it? That being said though, the way everything went, it seems like it's quite a sore wound for both of them. You're the one that brought the drama. How? Posting pictures with Louisa. Louisa, she was my friend. She was trying to help me. So what's wrong with that? No. Uh, that wait, looks wait, more wait, than like wait. friendship. Okay, that's wait. more than friendship wait. there. You need to wait. No, wait. No, that's wait. more than friendship. <laughs> Okay, this might have caused some drama, but Danielle can't blame their troubled relationship on this. The majority of their drama came way before he left her for Louisa. That being said though, why he's still pretending that him and Louisa were just friends is beyond me. He met up with her immediately after leaving Danielle and arguably left Danielle for her 
He traveled to Miami with her and they were staying in the same hotel rooms. They intended on moving in together and she was visibly disappointed when he said on camera that she was in the friend zone. And whilst admittedly all of these were just suspicions, I did some digging around on social media and got confirmation from Louisa herself that they were more than just friends. Firstly, she said that he was dirty. Apparently his feet smell, he didn't shower very often and he'd eat hot Cheetos in bed and leave crumbs everywhere. But then she went on to say that he wasn't very good in bed Bed, implicitly confirming that they had slept together on multiple occasions. She gave even more details by saying that he was very rough and violent in bed, didn't like f play very much and wasn't interested in her pleasure at all. She said that she put up with all of that at the start because she thought he was cute but that wore off very quickly for her. So yeah, I think it's kind of disrespectful for him to lie to Danielle's face whilst asking her for a favour but I guess he's probably just worried that if he admitted it, it would be game over for him. Mohammed. You apply for me to get the, the K-1 visa means you are, you own me. I brought you here, I trusted you. Why I don't did you have do that? to do that just because I'm obligated to. I do that because I love and care about you. You made me give up to everything and come here to be with you. The only way to move on is to get a divorce. He is not going about this in a good way at all, is he? At the end of the day, the power is completely in her hands. So being hostile and saying like you owe me and not giving her any of what she wants, like taking some responsibility or even apologizing, is just such a rough one. And I don't know why he's saying divorce is the only option because for her, it will be easier for her to move on if he's not even in the country. I feel used by you. You were supposed to make a life here with me. So you are a selfish person. What about me? You was giving me a hard time. You made me hate myself in that time. That's why I don't want to be your husband. So you don't screw my life. You killed everything inside me. Yeah, this approach is just so hostile, isn't it? I mean, don't get me wrong, I completely understand why he's angry and that he's got all this stuff he wants to get off his chest. Like all of her lies, all of her promises that she couldn't keep, how badly she treated him. And I'm sure plenty more will come out in the coming videos, but he's completely lost sight of why he's here. I'm sure a time will come when he can go on the offensive, but now is just not it. We are here to talk about the divorce. You mean annulment? I feel like uh, Daniel is saying like, look what I have against you, be with me or otherwise I will kick you out of the country. And that's not nice. That's like trying to make me a slave. Just move on, go find someone else better than me. And I will get my divorce. Why does he think she would want to give it to him? Imagine your ex running off with someone else, it not working out, them coming back and begging for a favor and doing it like this. He's just sat there and roasted her about how depressing her life is and how toxic and selfish she is and he's expecting her to let him get his way. I mean, I kind of rate the honesty, but this man is a divvy. I feel used and like trash. Why would I want you to stay here? It's not your country. It's not your house. You don't have the keys of the, this country. This country is for everybody No, else. not when there's other people responsible for you and you get in trouble by the government. I'm gonna Muhammad. stay here. I'm gonna stay here. No, you're not. I'm not like you asking for the government help. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, see, it's usually Muhammad storming off, but the dynamic has shifted massively here. Unlike how he's making it out, she does have the keys. She is literally in the driver's seat in this scenario. And he is not. He's not in the passenger seat. He's not even in the back seat. He is bound and gagged in the boot of the car. She can pull over and throw him out here or all the way in Tunisia if she wants to. And the way this conversation is going, it's like she's got her foot firmly on the gas. But as far as Muhammad's concerned, it's not over yet. I do need another chance to talk to her again because I already made it here to Ohio. <laughs> so I feel like I don't deserve going back with nothing. I don't know. I'm going to have to go home and think about all this. <laughs> but... I want the chance to talk to her again. At least we talk and make a decision.
Doesn't really sound like he's going to do anything differently next time, does it? He's not usually the delusional one in this dysfunctional relationship, but he's coming off very entitled here. If he's going to force her to make a decision and say that he has a right to stay in the US just because he's been there a while and he's come crawling back to Ohio and making it out like she owes him this, I really can't see him persuading Danielle. <laughs> I don't know what to do now because nobody in this earth can decide for me if I can stay here or not. If, if she doesn't give me the, the divorce, I will get in my way. She doesn't know what she's doing. He has an immense amount of confidence in his ability to take on US immigration, doesn't he? If he's gonna pick a fight, he needs to do it smart and with Danielle. So he is lucky that she drove off because he needs tensions to cool down and to approach this in a completely different way. Because as things stand, I do not back his chances of getting her to pull the annulment. Either way though, it looks like the fighters are gearing up for round two. And this time, muhammad has got to make it count. So if you're enjoying the series so far and you want to find out what happens next time they meet, make sure you subscribe down below so you can catch the next video as soon as I upload it. As always, the links to my Instagram, Twitter and other social media will be down below so you can come say hi in between uploads. And I would just like to say a very big thank you to all of my Patreons and channel members. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.